Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another video and by the title I'm sure you already know what we are unboxing today now I do want to say if you've already seen a MacBook unboxing you've seen them once you've kind of seen them all um, Please do stick around because I'm going to be talking about how this particular M1 MacBook, uh, M1 Max MacBook, has been working for my computer science engineering studies uh, and also for video creation at the end. So please do stick around. But uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So here is the box. It looks pretty standard now for MacBook boxes. For I think the past decade, they've been looking like this, but that's okay because they look pretty nice. Taking the plastic wrap off, no use of nice knives because there's a nice pull tab. As you can see, my recording apparatus is a little jank because I'm in my dorm room, but that's okay. Let's just get right into it. The top lifts off at a certain pace. I heard they engineer it to do it like that. That, I, that wouldn't surprise me. Here's the MacBook right at the top, as we know time and time again. Now the uh, goodies are a little bit different than years past. You obviously still get your pamphlet full of, you know, guides and Apple stickers, which where they, oh, yep, there they are, matte black, very nice touch. And then uh, below that, I'm showing these stickers for a long time, below that is the brand new 140 watt charger for the MacBook wrapped in paper. Very nice, very green, recyclable. I like to see it. Um, pretty big power adapter. I've never seen one this big. It's kind of rectangular more than square. And then below that, this is kind of brand new, is a USB-C to MagSafe cable. It's also braided, which is really nice. I'll show you that in a minute when I figure out how to detangle it from this kind of maze. You know, look how long it takes me. Anyway, it's pretty long, which is very nice because uh, this the MacBook doesn't include the box doesn't include an extension cable like the 2015 era MacBooks, but there it is braided uh, and detachable from the power brick, which I like a lot. So that's how it differs from past year's model. Here we go, unwrapping the laptop in its plastic. Uh, just a nice little pull tab on the back and you can kind of see the embossed MacBook logo. I think it looks so slick. I really like uh, what they did with this year's design. I know some people don't like the blacked out keyboard, which we'll see in a minute, or the more uh, rectangular design, but I think it looks really clean. If you haven't noticed by now, this is a space gray model. I think the silver and the space gray look pretty snazzy this year. So it's really awesome. Uh, just wiping some dust off of it. There is the embossed, embossed MacBook logo. I think it looks so cool and so sick. Opening up the laptop, you can see what I'm talking about with the blacked out keyboard. I think it looks super sick, especially with the silver. Nice high contrast with the uh, silver body, but the space gray looks really kind of stealthy as well. Here I am just setting up the laptop. And yeah, just really happy to get my hands on this uh, and test it out and kind of put it put it through its paces to see if it's worth the price tag and all of the hype. Now let's talk about the specs I got for this particular machine. Uh, it's a M1 Max 32 core GPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So it's basically uh, the highest caliber uh, pre-configured MacBook uh, that you can get off their website. One eternity later. So by the time I actually got around to editing this video, it's been about a month since I received this laptop, and so I want to give you a little update on how that first month has gone. By no means is this a review, since we have not done super in-depth testing of everything we want to cover, but I want to give my initial impressions of setting up the computer. So as I may or may not have mentioned earlier in the video, I'm currently in a computer science and engineering program. So I want to talk about my experience downloading some of the tools I use every day in my academic career, but I also want to touch on video editing performance after that. All right, so first let's talk about the basic apps almost every student needs to do their work. Microsoft Office has had absolutely no issue installing, and while not every app is native to Apple Silicon, such as Teams or OneDrive, every app works exactly how you would expect them to. Other basic apps like Spotify, Zoom, and Chrome run without problem as they all have Apple Silicon binaries available. 
Getting more into the computer science side of things, I was a little nervous when I was installing Eclipse. If you have worked with Java or Eclipse IDE before, you know that it can be a little finicky, to put it kindly. And to make matters worse, I also need to install some extra Eclipse plugins that we use in my curriculum. So uh, safe to say, I think a lot can go wrong here. But actually going through the experience, you would think I was on a normal Intel MacBook. And to be clear, Eclipse IDE is not M1 optimized yet. So I think the fact I set up a programming environment that is not native to the platform with such ease really surprised me. Beyond this point, I was confident that almost anything I threw at this computer from a development perspective was going to be absolutely sublime. Of course, Apple's own IDE Xcode was gonna run like a bat out of hell, but even Android Studio runs like a charm. A credible real world indicator of how well these machines run is from a staff engineer at Reddit who works on the Reddit Android app. These machines almost cut build times in half, which shows their power in a real world environment. There has not been a situation where this laptop has let me down yet. And although I'm giving this machine high praise, it's because Max can handle development tasks I'm doing very well. If you're a game developer or someone who wants to make Windows apps, obviously a high power Windows machine is going to make more sense for you. Also being a creator, Adobe has sort of gotten their act together and released an M1 optimized version of Premiere Pro, our video editing program of choice. I don't have a warehouse of similar computers for comparison, but I wanted to see how this laptop compares to my previous editing machine, a Ryzen 5 3600 desktop with GTX 1060 6GB and 32GB of DDR4 memory. Hardly a fair comparison on the GPU side especially, but I don't think you need me to tell you how COVID has roundhouse kicked the GPU market this year. I want to note for all these tests that the MacBook was plugged in and put into high power mode so we could see the best M1 Max has to offer. The first test is exporting our Fitbit Versa 2 review, which you should totally go check out if you haven't yet, and that link will be down below the like button. This is a good export test because it's a 13 minute 42 second 4K timeline that uses 6K B-RAW footage from our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro with a lot applied, but it also has a lot of motion graphics brought over from After Effects. Those files are imported using Dynamic Link, so it's really intense on the computer from a CPU, RAM, and GPU perspective. We exported to the H.264 4K YouTube preset and it exported with Adobe Media Encoder 22.0 to time the results. The Windows PC came in at 27 minutes, 37 seconds, which means it took around two minutes of export time for one minute of real time video. The M1 Max came in at just 15 minutes, 17 seconds for the same project, which is much closer to one minute of export time for one minute of real time video. This blew me away because I know from personal testing that this desktop is faster at rendering than the 2020 Dell XPS 15 we tested last year that came equipped with a newer NVIDIA GPU and eight core 10th gen Intel processor along with double the RAM. The problem with the XPS is it couldn't keep itself cool and would throttle hard. Upon preliminary testing, the MacBook does not have this issue. Moving on to a more simple test, I wanted to bring that same 6K B-RAW footage into a 4K timeline and export five minutes of real-time footage with a lot applied with nothing else. Also exporting it to the YouTube 4K preset. Again, the M1 Max flexes its mighty muscles as on average, it was over two minutes faster than the Windows PC. I recreated the same project in DaVinci Resolve 17, which is very well optimized for both Nvidia GPUs and Apple Silicon. Here, M1 Max was truly unleashed and left this particular PC in the dust, shaving almost three minutes off the render time of the Windows machine. This test also shows that Adobe is leaving a lot on the table in terms of performance, which is no shock, so if you want the absolute most out of your Apple Silicon machine in terms of video editing, you should consider using Final Cut or Resolve. Again, I want to reiterate before PCMR declares war that this test is not an apples to apples comparison. However, stay tuned for the testing that we're going to do on the aforementioned Dell XPS to see if it can fight against the M1 Max. Regardless, the MacBook put up a stellar performance and I am so impressed at what these ARM chips can offer, especially on software that can fully take advantage of it, like Resolve. 
I want to give a quick shout out to a website called isapplesiliconready.com. We're not sponsored or anything like that, but it is a fantastic resource to look at to find out if your favorite programs can run on these M1 machines. It's got all sorts of categories that you can go through and it will tell you if there is an Apple Silicon native version of that program or if it will run through Rosetta. However, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we're back from a little bit of a hiatus, finishing up school and all that. But now that we're on break, we can get back on the top spec grind. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next time.